I'm Vicky Letch and I've been joined today by Stephen Burkoff. Hello, sir. How are we? Well, very well, Vicky. Thank you. Good to hear. Now, I've got a medley of your work in front of me, so I'm going to do this and fly by the seat of my pants. Tell us all about this book. Well, Vicky, you see, this is one of Shakespeare's most difficult plays. Mm -hmm. And I was in New York directing this for a place called the Shakespeare Festival Theatre, which was started by an incredible man called Joe Papp. Mm -hmm. And he began this Shakespeare Festival Theatre because he felt that Shakespeare opened up the minds of youth, that it helped them, that it helped them to discover a much deeper, wider world. So he had a Shakespeare Festival every year. His successor, um, asked me to come back and direct Richard II. It was a play I didn't have much affection for, but I did it. And I worked on it very, very, very carefully indeed. And the play was successful, and it achieved fantastic reviews. It was really celebrated. So I wrote a work journal during the period. And the journal um, is of, often a way of getting rid of you know, your bile. It's a kind of vomitorium, if you like. And, you know, you let off steam, but sometimes you can't, I mean, you might have a row with the lighting man or the producer or an actor, but if you put it down, it's there forever. And the row may have only lasted a day. And then the, by the end, you love each other, and meanwhile, you've written out what a bastard <laughs> they are. But I did point out in the book, not only Richard II, but the problems of directing a group of actors and the problems of a kind of concept of theatre which I find unpalatable, if not actually um, destructive. It's that they want to know what kind of set you're going to have, what you need before you begin. Mm -hmm. But I only create that with the actors. How do we know how they're going to move? What would be the, the kind of uh, requirements of the scene? What uh, compels the actor to do certain actions. So if you have this set, you have curtailed any possibility of the actors using their imagination, except to fit in with the designer. But that is wrong. The designer fits in with the actors. Let's get the priorities straight. But in the commercial world, they need five weeks to make the set. They've got to do the costings. So everything is ass upwards. Mm -hmm. That's why theatre is so bloody boring. Because you go into the stage on the first day of rehearsal and the actors stand around the set. And they say, well, here's your entrance and there's a door here. And, and you, when you come in, Hamlet, you come in through this door around the back, blah, 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 blah. And it's all wrong. It's absolutely wrong. It's like going to a tailor and he's got the suit made before you get in. He says, well, this is it, and that will do you here, and you, you fit into it as best you can. So this deals with those frustrations. Okay. Richard II in New York. That's a fantastic read, I think. And it goes into a, quite a lot of detail about the play, about the comparisons with Richard to today, and how I discovered the key to make this production so interesting. And that key was fascinating. So very exciting for just a fan of yours, yes. stepping into your working mind. Are they yes. going to get an insight to see absolutely, how you work? Absolutely. Because it's a key. It's a kind of mystic puzzle. And that's how I see every play. Every play contains within it the kind of creative DNA. There's what is the key? So I work with actors for the first day or two, see how they move, try some music. Music often opens up all those doors of the unconscious, and then, bang, there we, we have it.